Welcome back to On Texas Football. Uh, I'm joined with Jerry Hamilton. I'm CJ Vogel. we got a, a little bit to talk about in terms of uh, what's to be expected from this freshman class coming up today, Jerry. Uh, obviously, three practices in the books. Texas is uh, back on the field. Freshmen getting their first uh, kind of taste of fall camp and what that entails. Uh, it's starting to heat up. You know, the, we know it's hot coming in from summer. Uh, the fall camp's heating up in terms of intensity. We've obviously seen that with Eclipse. Jerry, you were out at practice last week as well, so you got to see these guys in their first kind of taste of uh, fall camp going into the season, of course. But I wanted to, to toss you this question real quick. You were out there. You got to see these guys moving around uh, in helmets earlier this week. W was there any one guy that you looked at and said, oh, yep, his body has changed from the spring or wow, this guy came in early or, or I guess in, in the summer and a little bit more advanced than what you thought physically. I think uh, Alex January has done really good work. Um, one of the first, and I said this on a couple of our shows, <clears throat> he impressed me because he tries to jump to the front of every line too. That's, you know, when you're in a position where there's two returning guys that have played a lot, three portal guys have had a lot of starts Sometimes it's easy to drift back, right? Um, not only is he put in the work, he looks really good at 305, 310, but he wants to jump right in the fray and get after it. So Alex January really impressed me. Uh, Santana Wilson was a guy that wasn't in the spring, came in in the summer, and physically definitely look, looks like he belongs. I think Kobe Black's done some good work on his, uh, on his body as well. Um, I think he's maybe shed some, uh, we call it baby fat, youthful, uh, maybe uh, fat, and then and and he's kind of he looks better now physically than what he did. Uh, Wardell Max, you know, plus fifteen pounds from when I saw him his senior year down at John Arrett. Um, Ty Anthony Smith has maybe made the biggest gains just from a guy that was one ninety three that's closing on two fifteen, two twenty. Now he's plus twenty pounds. Steve Sarkeesian said it in his press conference, so that's considerable number. Uh, for for Ty Anthony Smith, uh, because that means he's going to be a six one and a half, two hundred and thirty pound guy with a seventy nine eighty inch wingspan and time. That dog will hunt. Yeah, yeah. One other name I wanted to mention that I've heard is Nate Kibble, obviously the interior offensive lineman from Atascosita. Sounds like he's been hitting the ground running since arriving in the summer. Uh, uh, kind of to build on this, we've talked about Jerry, kind of body transformations, guys building up. That Ty Anthony Smith, Colin Simmons back in the spring, but. Alex January slimmed down a little bit. You said he's yeah. looking good. 305, is that about you know where you expect him to be for this upcoming season? 305, 310, uh, probably a 315, 320-pound guy when all said and done, uh, almost 6'5", good arm length, big hands. His father, Mike January, played at Texas. has coached him up well. He's got really good hand placement, so he he's going to do very well in drills as he's done uh, since he's been in Austin, but physically – he looks like a guy that can contribute to me, and I think he will. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's a great segue there. We're going to talk today a little bit about, you know, some of the freshmen that we expect to be impact guys for the Texas Longhorns this fall. Uh, obviously, we've been reporting Ryan Wingo is going to be one of those guys. Who else joins him kind of in that tier one category? Uh, we certainly made the conversation off air. Uh, there's probably a handful, probably four or five guys that you could certainly see uh, being – rotational pieces or big time contributors. Uh, let's go through that real quick. Yeah. I think we think that's going to be Ryan Wingo, Colin yeah. Simmons on the defensive side of the ball, uh, Michael Kern specialist at the punting's position. Texas didn't take a portal punter this summer. Looks to me like they're going to trust the leg out of St. Thomas Aquinas. And then Alex January, January was the other guy that we both talked about maybe having a little bit larger of an impact for the typical freshman. And again, Texas in a position this year with the depth that it has and kind of the ability to go out in the portal to add a big keynote guy where they're not relying a whole lot on these incoming true freshmen to be on the field as often as maybe in years past. But of those four guys, Jerry, and maybe I'm missing one here, uh, who is the guy that you're looking at right now? Is it just – is it Ryan Wingo right away that's going to make the largest impact for the Longhorns this year? Well, I think it's the guys that can bring something, a special quality strength to a team who's ranked top five that may not have or may need a little more of. Uh, Ryan Wingo's the biggest body at outside receiver before you get to a skill set. And, and in person – Again, he looked like it in the spring, looks more like it now on the first couple of glances last week. Physically, that guy's ready to go at this level. He just is. 
Um, and he brings the ability at 6'2", 205, 210 pounds. He's the biggest guy out there. He's different than everybody else. So uh, before you ever get to him running a route, him catching a pass, able to actually have some wiggle after the catch, you just look at him and say, He's, he bring, he provides something physically that Steve Sarkeesian and the staff don't have. That They lost when A.D. Mitchell went to the NFL. That's a bigger outside receiver. They can go make a play on the ball in the air So uh, with really good timing. So that alone forces him. He's forced his way in due to that. And now, by the end of the season, we'll see where this whole receiver rotation is. Um, with Colin Simmons, it's pass rush. It's the twitched-up pass rush, and they got it in spades in this class. Trey Moore out of the portal, Colin Simmons out of high school. Uh, um, but Colin Simmons physically doesn't look like a freshman anymore. He looks really like he's ready to go. Now, is he ready to stand up against the run against Georgia when they load up the box? I'm not saying that. But physically, he's ready to be a pass rusher at the power four level in the against the schedule Texas is going to play. Those two guys definitely bring something to the table more so or equal to, uh, in Colin Simmons' uh, case, what a couple of other players do at Texas, but they don't have an abundance of it. So they could be difference makers as freshmen do that alone. Uh, Michael Kern, you said from a punter, he may be the first guy to start. We'll see how the punting competition goes. Um but, uh, look, he has the strongest leg being there in person. There's no doubt he has the strongest leg. Is he going to have the best consistency? As it, are, is he going to be the punter when Texas travels to Michigan and there's a lot of pressure punting the football in the fourth quarter? That's the question. Now, they have guys who've been in the program, Ian Ratliff, one of those, but it's not like they've punted in games. So from an experience standpoint in games, the slate's clean. They're all the same. But at least in practice experience, the rush of college players, that athleticism, um, the coaching, because it's intense on special teams with Jeff Banks, right? There's a different pressure that comes with it. Um, I think that will be interesting to see. But Michael Kern, again, like Wingo, like Colin Simmons, he does bring something that the, the guys already on campus don't have. He by far has the strongest leg. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's, there's something to be said for that. Yeah, I think that's a, a really interesting way to look at it, obviously. How do you as a freshman bring something that's not already on the roster at the moment? We'll yeah. see, you know, just what these guys can, you know, kind of carry on momentum for uh, going on to later fall camp practices. Uh, I did get two texts earlier this week, kind of uh, recapping the first two practices. The first was about Ryan Wingo, who said he's uncoverable. No one can stick with him in the one-on-ones. He does create that separation in that body, as you said, uh, you know, it provides a bit of a difficulty. Speaking about wide receiver bodies and maybe a, a way in which a, another freshman could see the field, Parker Livingstone, you know, 6'4", has that ability. I'm not saying he's going to be on the field often, but he does, to your point, Jerry, he has that little bit of a different body type than the typical Sarkeesian uh, wide receiver. Uh, he, that was the other text I received. Sneaky fast. And I think for anybody that saw him in person, maybe not that much of a surprise, but at the college level to hear that translating – Things sound like they're printing in the positive direction there as well. Busy room, crowded room, a lot of bodies yeah. with experience. Him yeah. and Butler probably, Aaron Butler, him and Aaron Butler probably need to have patience this year. But if they have patience and develop, I, I think a op great opportunity will be there for them. And that doesn't mean injuries are going to happen. Injuries yeah. could force somebody onto the field. Uh, but I, I think both those guys, I mean, Aaron Butler's got really good feet. Um, he's got the ability to create separation, right? He's just got to get more consistent as a route runner. I think he's got some depth issues in route running based on the two practices that we had media window availability to, especially the first one that he's kind of working through as he develops in that Parker Livingstone getting stronger, right? What's yeah. going to happen with Parker Livingstone if they put him in and they go up against a really good press cover guy, can he get off the line of scrimmage? But size and speed doesn't help if you can't get off the line. So they're, they're different developments for these guys. But I think, look, if you put Wingo, Livingstone, Aaron Butler, that's a really good freshman receiver class is what it is. And they all have different skill sets um, and, and they can win in different ways. So that's going to be really good in the future as long as those guys stick with it, the development part of this process.
Absolutely. And I, that kind of segues us again into that next body of, of, of freshmen coming in. And I think it's going to be headlined by Xavier Phil I mean, you know, he was that highly touted safety out of McKinney uh, coming in. We've also heard good things about Ty Anthony Smith and the body in which he's kind of transformed into. We saw Jordan Washington uh, at the tight end spot in the spring, but also which running back emerges as a guy that Texas can rely yeah. on as well. Uh, Jerry, of this next group, again, there's probably a few more that could be in the conversation. Is there anybody that stands out as, yeah, he will be on the field, or is it all kind of earn your stripes through special teams? We'll see how the season progresses, and if injuries occur, who steps up, you know, in, in terms of out of necessity more so than, yep, he's got to be a guy we ha- we see on the field immediately. I, I think Alex January will play at D-line, and I know people are like, what? No, I think he's going to play. Do I think he's going to be in the six-man rotation? Against Michigan, I'm not saying that, but I think it's just, he's going to play, and it won't shock me if as the season moves along, he doesn't get four or five, six more snaps than what people are expecting. Because I think he's coming with that mentality. Uh, I think he's done great work physically. I think, like I said, I mentioned earlier, Mike January, former player at Texas, has done a great job teaching his son hand placement to start, which is key. Uh, but I, I think he's just he's fir- he was jumped to the first of line whenever he could, not in front of Alfred Collins and Vernon. But in the stretching, he jumps right up there and tries to be in that group with those guys. He wasn't hanging in the back saying, you know, I'm here. I'm going to red shirt and I'm going to wait my turn. That dude is here to compete. And he is, I think he's going to play a little bit. The safeties are interesting to me. Uh, Jordan Johnson, Rebell, and Phil Samee. Because I think you'll see them on special teams. I think a Ty Anthony Smith you could see on special teams. Um, but what's going to be interesting to the, with those guys is it's all on – it's not necessarily their play right now uh, because they're freshmen. Um, you could see in drills, Xavier feels to be sometimes still a little bit a half step late responding to something Blake Gideon wants him to in a drill. George Johnson rebels more advanced there coming from IMG. It's like a college program, uh, yeah. but that's they're dependent on what does Jelani McDonald do? Is Jelani McDonald going to be ready to play in coverage? If he's not, that could open the door for Jordan Johnson Rebel later in the season. And what sex is going to do with Jade Barrett? Yeah. Is he going to is he going to be a nickel corner or is he going to be a nickel safety? I, I think Jelani McDonald maybe hold the cards to that question with the safeties the next couple of weeks of fall practice. Because I think you know what you have in Derek Williams. Um, I think you know what you have in McCoop, and I think you know what you have in Taft. Who, what, I'm not sure they know what they have behind it quite yet. I think Jolly McDonald's got upside, but is he ready to be a safety turn and run in coverage? That's a different question than what he looks like physically and how he plays downhill. Um, so I think that's the question that has to be answered. Running backs, there's going to be injury. We know this. So Baxter and Baxter to start, Blues two, Wisner three. And I do think Wisner is going to eat in the carries a little bit more. He'll play more in games than Keelan Robinson did. But you know all three of those guys won't make it healthy all the way through the season. It's the running back position. It is what it is. Um, who is going to be that guy, Jarrett Gibson or Christian Clark, would be the next man up. In the spring, Gibson was ahead of Clark when you know in the spring game and when they rotated. I think that's going back and forth. I think they're both physically ready to play. I think Christian Clark was going to make bigger strides from spring practice to fall practice than Jarrett Gibson did from spring to fall practice. The reason I say that is Jarrett Gibson played two years at IMG. He was already part of a small college program. He played against the elite competition. Um, the He had the training table. He had the st- college-level strength and conditioning coach. He already had all that. So he walked into Texas in January, and he really wasn't phased. So he was going to be more ready than Christian Clark in January and through spring practice. That doesn't mean into spring practice to August that Christian Clark didn't make a bigger jump than Jarrett because Jarrett came in ahead. I think they're both interesting players because they, they're already physically ready to play at the power four level. I think Christian Clark's the best natural running back build of anybody in the room at Texas. And I think Jarrett Gibson could actually be number two in that regard. Um, but I, it'll be interesting to see if one of those guys breaks through CJ as a goal line, short yep. yardage type of back, because they're both compact, powerful guys. They do it in different way. So Jarrett Gibson's going to be the patient between the tackles guy that gets small on contact that may be hard to find at times because he's 5'9", 205. 
Christian Clark more the violent cutter. Um, he has more of that stop, start, jump cut, skip cut, get small through the hole than Jarrett Gibson does. So they're going to do it in different ways. Uh, one of those guys will have to play at some point this year because injuries happen. Yeah, I, it's interesting in terms of, you know, going back to your point earlier, who brings something to the room that's not already there for one of the freshmen. And, you know, with the way in which we've seen Sarkeesian utilize a, a wildcat package or, you know, one of those goal line heavy duty formations, are we sure that's going to be a CJ Baxter or is there an opportunity there for a Jarrett uh, Gibson or a Christian Clark? I think that'll be really interesting again in terms of short yardage kind of specialty uh, niche formations or usages. Uh, we'll see, but I think that's the way that you see either one of those freshmen on the field more often than expected coming in is if they earn the trust of a Sarkeesian to stand behind center, take the snap and utilize or, or kind of diagnose what's ahead of them with that formation. That'll be interesting, but I wanted to go, uh, go ahead. Uh, I, I was, so I was gonna, you were about to segue, but I wanted to get, I wanted to mention one other guy. We got to talk about him is Jordan Washington. Yes. Jordan Washington's going to play. How much is he going to play? I don't know. Again, that, that I think that depends on the health of Gunner Helm, Amari and I have like not health, staying healthy throughout the season. What is a Juan Davis role? Juan Davis, I think, has a role as a blocker, but I think Jordan Washington's ahead of him as a pass catcher down the field a little bit in the intermediate game. Jordan Washington's going to play. It, it, this one's very simple. Jeff Banks doesn't go at a press coordinator press conference and call a freshman a rising star and then him redshirt. Jordan Washington's going to play. Um, and I think that tied in rooms is arguably as good as any room right now at Texas this season because of Nye Black, who moves like a wide receiver tight end. He's just a problem. Gunnar Helm is a senior. Juan Davis is a senior as a really good blocker. Um, and then you bring in Jordan Spencer Shannon as a, as a inline blocker. Um, then you bring in uh, Jordan Washington, who physically 6'4", 250, long arms, but he showed he was fearless in the spring game. So uh, he's playing – how much we're going to find out, but we can guarantee people. Jeff Banks didn't say rising star and then go redshirt the guy. That's not happening. That, that's a that's a heck of a point. Uh, I mean, we saw the big play over the middle in which he uh, he kind of wowed some Texas fans in the spring game. Got a basketball background, can go get the ball uh, vertically uh, in the air. He he understands how to do the uh, the dirty work as well. He's a willing blocker. We saw it on tape. But moving on, uh, one other note, real quick. Uh, offensive line, I think we expect, you know, barring something crazy where Texas loses multiple, multiple people, uh, those three will be redshirting this year. Uh, hopefully they get some snaps and mop up duty, but not, you know, necessarily, and fortunately for Texas, uh, that we're expecting a freshman offensive lineman to make, you know, a, a whole lot of impact right now. We'll see, of course, if Brandon Baker does win that second right tackle position job uh, tight battle. Of course, we're expecting to carry on through spring and into the season, uh, but moving on, I, I, we talked a little about Xavier Phil and me and Jordan Johnson, room bell, Jerry, uh, that cornerback spot was one that Texas was pretty pleased with, right? You won over a, a late commitment from Kobe black, Santana Wilson, uh, Wardell Mack, two guys from out of state that Texas was fortunate and put in a lot of work to land in their 2024 recruiting class is that still a spot that's kind of contingent on how Texas utilizes Jod A. Barron is a Warren Roberson kind of that blockade there to get these freshmen on the field? What are you expecting right now from these freshman cornerbacks and how often you know they could be impact guys or on the field at all? Yeah, I want to add to what you said about the offensive line. Texas loves all three of those guys, by the way. They just they're not forced to play them, but make that's no mistake, they really like those guys. Uh, corner is interesting. Um, Wardell Mack was working at nickel, which to me, that's a very positive sign for Wardell Mack because that is a, you could argue that's the most difficult cover spot in, in, in football now is the nickel because people are going to put their quickest, shiftiest, fastest guy there to go against you. Um, so that is actually a pretty good sign for Wardell Mack's future at Texas. Um, so he was working at nickel and not corner. Well, with the first two media open windows. Does that mean he is the rest of August? No. Um, Santana Wilson, I think CJ, after seeing him you know, with the background, with his obviously his father, a tremendous player, so grew up with DB mindset, watching DB tape, right? 
knowing how to train at that position and be a corner specific guy. I think if he had been in for spring, he might have been competing mm. with Warren Roberson for that fourth corner spot. Um, I think Kobe Black has talent for sure. I, I I'm not sure he's not. He doesn't need the most time, even though it's the most highly ranked. That the ranking is one thing. That's the on the upside. I'm not sure he doesn't need the most time of any of these guys though. That that's but Santana Wilson had that advantage, right? And that and and yes, Kobe Black has his brother Corey Black. His father played for Bill Snyder at Kansas State, but it's still different when your dad was an NFL guy and works in the NFL, worked in the NFL and played right. in the NFL, and you grew up in it, right? That's just a different level. Um, so I think Santana Wilson physically looks good. He has a great corner build. He has enough arm length about him. He has the feet. You saw We saw that. Bobby and I saw that in a short amount of time. Rod Babers as well. Um, I think Warren Roberson is the odds-on favorite there. If a Santana Wilson, say, came in and did that in a short amount of time, Texas fans would just say, hmm, that's a really good sign. You got one. Yep. I, I, I was going to make the point. It's a bit interesting, right? You know, uh, and again, going back to Texas and their recruiting, targeting guys that won, win championships at the high school level. I've talked about that at length. But two, finding guys from college and NFL pedigrees that come in already knowing what it takes to, you know, make it at the next level without having stepped foot on campus. Santana Wilson being one of those, Alex January, another. Uh, uh, the other thing I wanted to mention about Kobe Black is I think early on for him, until he really gets that speed of the game kind of, uh, you know, acclimation, you're going to see the highs and the lows with him. I think you have the boomer bust kind of uh, approach with a Kobe Black at the moment. And of course, a freshman cornerback, I think that's to be expected at times, but you saw it in the spring game, right? You got stacked by Ryan Wingo. That was a long touchdown, but also undercut along outside of, you know, route in which he came away with the interception. So you see the glimpses. It's all about consistency. And to your point, I think a guy with the NFL pedigree and kind of tutelage of a father who spent a decade plus in the NFL, that's going to be where the, you know, kind of differentiation is in terms of the two. Yeah. And Santana Wilson was a corner. And he returned some kicks in high school. But he was a corner. He's trained at corner. Kobe Black played all over the place, you know. So and he Ever. played corner. Don't get me wrong, but he, then he played safety. Then he played offense. So these guys, you know, have to come in and really kind of work for an extended period of time at a singular position. And those guys that have to do that for the first time, it takes them a little longer. So. It's def lack. I the term it's a broken record, but it's not add water instant player with players like that. They need time to develop. Uh, and the addition of a JV on Cole gives a guy like uh, Kobe Black time to develop. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see. Of course, plenty of talent coming in with this freshman class, Jerry. I think we're all excited for a number of big time names this year and down the road. Certainly, uh, a, a really bright, positive outlook on what this class will bring to Texas during their time on campus. Uh, Ryan Wingo headlines, and of course, Alex January, guys like Colin Simmons, also uh, figure to be big time pieces this well this year as well. Uh, I wanted to say this to Zena. Umeo Zulu looks tremendous physically. He's got a bright future at Texas. Melvin Hills looks really good seeing him mm. in person, 305 pounds. He, he, he's got the build. It's put together well. He's a max effort guy. I know Texas has really liked what they've seen from him in the summer it, it, since he wasn't an early enrollee. So I wanted to make sure we mentioned those guys because, again, development, development on the defensive line. There are very few twitched up guys like Colin Simmons that just yeah. come in and they're ready to have a singular trait that makes them elite from day one in college football. Zena, great frame. Melvin Hill's really good frame has worked really hard since he's been on campus. So that depth uh, is maybe is building on, on the defensive front for Texas, maybe more so than what we talk about or give it credit for at times. That, it's a heck of a note going into the SEC. You'll need those big bodies, but that'll do it for today. Of course, uh, kind of breaking down this freshman class, you know, what to expect moving forward. Of course, fall camp underway. Texas will be back on the field Saturday night. Uh, uh, just getting ready, Jerry. It's here. Football season is right around the corner. Officially, they're back on the practice field. So that's one leg of the, the race completed. But Jerry, thank you for joining me today. Uh, of course, I'm CJ Vogel. That was Jerry Hamilton. Tremendous work, of course, on, on TexasFootball.com. Come join the community being OTFOG as well. But that'll hey, be hey, CJ, 40 Acres Apparel. If you like the shirt, it's at the co-op, 40 Acres Apparel. 
Well, there we go. That's, I mean, stylish as hell, Jerry. I like it. Uh, but that'll do it for today. Thank you again, and come join us on OnTexasFootball.com. Welcome.